Welcome to this service of morning prayer. This is Wednesday the 19th of August. August already. Halfway through. Gosh. If you'd like to follow the liturgy, if you'd like to click on the link in the description below. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 77. And our scripture is Acts 4, 13 to 31. So let's begin our service. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. I'm doing the prayer of thanksgiving this morning, which is, Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever, as your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our psalm this morning is Psalm 77. The refrain is, In the day of trouble I have sought the Lord. I cry aloud to God, I cry aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire, my soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan, I ponder and my spirit fades. You will not let my eyelids close, I am troubled that I cannot speak. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. I consider the days of old, I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night, my spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast us off forever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy clean gone forever? Has his promise come to an end forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he shut up his compassion in displeasure? And I said, my grief is this that the right hand of the Most High has lost its strength. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who worked wonders and declared your power among the peoples. With a mighty arm you redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. The waters saw you, O God, the waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind, your lightnings lit up the ground, and earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your path in the great waters, but your footsteps were not known. You led your people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. God, our shepherd, you led us and saved us in times of old. Do not forget your people in their troubles, but raise up your power to sustain the poor and helpless for the honour of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We now have our scripture reading, which is Acts 4, verses 13 to 31. O 
When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realised that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin, and they, then they conferred together. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everybody living in Jerusalem knows they have done an outstanding miracle, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn these men to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God, for we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them, because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, You made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate meant met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and spoke the word of God boldly. Now we have a reflection on that passage, which is by Brother Samuel. And he's looking at the section where we talk about when they'd prayed, the place in which they were gathered was shaken. Compare the two gatherings described in today's reading. First, the council of the rulers, the elders and the members of the high priestly family, before whom Peter and John had been brought as prisoners. They are flummoxed as to what to do in the face of the evidence of the lame man's healing and in response to Peter's preaching. There is no argument mounted against Peter's powerful words. All they can do is organise an exercise in damage limitation, warning the apostles to desist from further teaching in Jesus' name and threatening punishment if they continue. It's a bureaucratic fudge and as a strategy for silencing the apostles, totally ineffective. The other gathering is of friends around the newly released prisoners. Here, the atmosphere is one of jubilation and praise, worship as an act of defiance. It's significant. It is significant that praise is often heard loudest among those who are poor and vulnerable to injustice. Whether in situations of oppression, voices are lifted in praise of God, whether that be in the prison cell of a violent regime, in the harsh conditions of slave labour, among the poverty of a refugee settlement, or within churches under persecution. Then, as in Jerusalem, the earth moves and the foundations of oppression are shaken. Let us join them in praise and faithfulness. Now uh, we have the Gospel Canticle, which is the Benedictus. The refrain is, you show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. 
He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. So we come to our intercessions now. And as we've been reading about the oppressed and those may be um, enslaved because of uh, injustice of uh, corrupted uh, regimes or persecuted because of uh, faith, I think we maybe should cover that in our prayers this morning. So um, if we pray uh, for the day and its tasks, and for the world and its needs where we can cover those things, and for the church and her life. And um, if we pray to ourselves, and then I'll um, end each section with, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let's pray for the day and its tasks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the world and its needs, um, thinking of of those people who are suffering injustice and um, persecution. And, um, yeah, those were parts in the world which uh, are suffering. So let's pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for the church and her life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we say the collect this day. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to us such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, until next time, thank you for joining me and I'll see you uh, the next time.